Hi, I'm Masahiro Sato. Today, I'd like to talk about the online evaluation method for the causal effect of recommendations. This is the outline of my talk. Let's start from introduction. A user interacts with items through recommender systems and outside the recommender systems. The left figure illustrates the interaction on recommended items. A recommender system chooses several items for a user, and the user might choose some of them. The right figure illustrates the interaction without recommendations. A user might check all the candidates, especially when the number of candidates is small. For example, in a restaurant, we might look through all dishes in the menu list. A user might also choose from items they already know. Because of these users' natural behaviors, clicks or purchases on recommended items could have been occurred even without the recommendations. The causal effect of recommendation is defined as the difference between outcome if recommended and outcome if not recommended. For example, if the item would be purchased whether recommended or not, then tau ui becomes zero and there's no causal effect. If the purchase is triggered by the recommendation, tau ui becomes one and there's positive causal effect. So why do we care about the causal effect? Because it's beneficial to both users and service providers. For users, it can lead to the serendipitous discovery of items. When there's no causal effect, a user might feel, I know the item, I would choose it anyway. The recommendation is boring. On the other hand, if there's positive causal effect, a user might feel, looks interesting. I didn't know the item. I'm happy that I can find it. For service provider, it can lead to the increase of sales. When there's no causal effect, a service provider might get into trouble with recommended items that are often purchased, why there's no difference in sales volume. On the other hand, if there's a positive causal effect, we improved our sales as never before. Our new recommender system is very successful. To pursue the causal effect of recommendations, several methods are already available. There are several recommendation methods targeting specifically for the causal effect. And other recommendation methods are applicable for the causal effect purpose. So are we ready for practical use of them? Not yet. We need online evaluation to be sure about their actual benefits before we widely deploy them in our service. You might wonder, we can simply conduct A-B testing. However, evaluating the causal effect is not so easy. There are two common settings of A-B testing. A-B list compares the average interactions in recommendation lists it measures right T, recommended outcome, but not measuring the causal effect. AB total compares the average interaction in the total of recommended and non-recommended items. It can compare the causal effect, but it requires a large number of users, so it's inefficient. Inefficient online experiment is dangerous. Inefficiency means we need to experiment with many users. What would happen if the experimented recommendation models perform very poorly? Possibly, many users blame your service and your business could be damaged by sales drop. We want to avoid these situations. So here we provide a solution. 
In this work, we propose the first interleaving method for efficient comparison of the causal effect of models. An interleaving method is composed of a generation of interleaved lists and aggregation of outcomes. First, I highlight the difference in generation of interleaved lists. If you want to compare model A and B, we first create recommendation list LUA, LUB from two models. And then we generate interleaved list LU by the mixture of them. Our methods do the above, satisfying the condition for causal effect identifiability. More specifically, we select items either with equal probability or satisfying positivity. In terms of the aggregation of outcomes, conventional methods only measure items in interleaved list. Our methods are different in that we also measure items not in interleaved list. For more details, please refer to our paper. So now let's move on to the experiment part. We conducted experiments to verify these two research questions. RQ1, which online evaluation methods produces valid estimates of the true differences in average causal effect. Among these compared evaluation methods, EPIRCT and CBI-IPS are our proposed methods. RQ2 are the proposed interleaving methods more efficient than A-B testing. If a method requires fewer experimental users, the method is more efficient. We conducted simulated online experiments. Step one is to generate two lists by two compared models for each user. Step two is to generate interleaved lists. And step three is to simulate observed outcomes, assuming the interleaved lists are actually recommended. In this presentation, we only show the results in the Hubby dataset because of time constraint. These are models compared by evaluation methods. Since our primary focus is in evaluation methods, detail of these recommendation models are not important for our experiments. Online evaluation methods aim to estimate their relative superiority. This is a result for RQ1. The figure showed the estimated differences in the causal effect of two models compared. If it's closer to the truth value, it is better. We can see that the AB total, EPIRCT, and CBIPS yield their estimates centered around the true values. So they are unbiased evaluation. Next, we verify the efficiency of evaluation. The figure shows the dependence of a false ratio on the number of experimented users. The false ratio is a ratio that a beta model is falsely judged as worse one. The false ratio decreases with the number of users. And the AB total requires about 30 times more users to achieve the same false ratio with APRCT and CBIPS. Thus, we can conclude that the proposed methods are more efficient than AB total. So, in summary, we propose the first interleaving method for comparing the causal effect of models. Simulated online experiments verify the unbiasedness and efficiency of the proposed methods. Future work includes the extension to multi living and conducting real online experiments. That's all. Thank you for your attention.